Hey guys, it's Leah Virgin, your Christian coach and author at BurstingWithBlessings.com and today is Wednesday. Happy Wednesday everyone. I can't even believe it's Wednesday. I mean, I can and I can't. I feel like it's kind of zooming by and I don't even know what's wrong Instagram. I can't seem to connect to the Instagram, but it's all good because now Facebook, I have like don't look at the gray hair. <laughs> it's been a day. It's been a day, you guys. It's been a day. But God is getting me through it. I think that today what we're going to have to talk about um, is powerful and beautiful. And I think things just kind of stacking up against me today. I mean, what is going on with the Instagram? Your connection isn't strong enough. Who knew? Give that a try. Um, but let me know where you are listening from. I always love to see that. Um, I have, I feel like I have friends all over the country now. Iowa and Texas and um, Kansas and Missouri and Alabama. I'm trying to remember where some of the other um where you guys all are from, and I'm losing my losing the memory of it. So today, I will say that I am very, very grateful to God for chocolate. I am very, very grateful for dark chocolate. It just—I'm not saying to eat your feelings. Don't slay me, guys. But I am human. Hashtag real and raw. But um, dark chocolate, I had two little pieces, and I, it was just yummy goodness. And I just felt like, okay, okay, just a little little treat, little treat, nothing big. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I live on, you know, coffee, tea, chocolate, and compliments. So you guys look great today, and I'm glad that you're here, and I thank you for joining me today. It's my honor to serve you as your Christian life coach, as we are all trying to strive to transform ourselves and to tap into the power of God that dwells within us. You know, I think that's one of the most interesting things of being a Christian, is that we have the peace of, of God dwelling within us. That we uh, we have that ability to tap in, to feel God, to feel His presence. And oftentimes we're so busy, so overwhelmed, so worried about our situations that we become disconnected from that power that dwells within us. Right? The Bible says the power of God dwells within us. The power of the Most High who raised Jesus dwells within us. Sorry, Instagram, you're you're just not going to get something Bible study today, guys. Um so, you know, that that's something that we need to think about. Like it's always there. You know, a lot of times we say we don't feel the peace of God. Like, you know, last 2 3 hours, I would say, no, probably 3 hours, it has been an emotional roller coaster for me. And not as intense as the days when I didn't have, you know, my affirmations and my prayers and my proclamations. But the last three hours have been been really raw and real. And I've allowed myself to feel kind of disconnected from God because I'm dwelling on my worries. I'm dwelling on my concerns, right? You know, it says fix your eyes on God. Right? It says, you know, keep your eyes fixed straight ahead. Do not turn to the right or the left. And what God's really saying, and I always used to hate the the verse, be still and know that he is God. I actually didn't like it. I shouldn't say hate because you can't, I, I won't hate anything out of the Bible. But it was a feel for me. I felt like, what does that even mean? What does that even mean? Like, be still. What does that mean? Right? You have to act. It says you have to have, you know, work based off of your faith, right? It says do. <laughs> and, you know, what I've come to realize over the last few years um, is that, you know, that, that, that stillness is the frantic worry. You know, we as American culture women 
we tend to juggle way too many things. We tend to have to juggle too many things. Um, some of us are single moms, and that's kind of a position that's been, you know, thrust on us. And then there's others of us who haven't found the balance to say no or our voice to say no, right? But often we're so concerned with all the things and fixing all the things. And that was where my concern was. How do I fix this? How do I help my daughter's attitude? How do I, you know, balance, you know, the incoming bills? How how do I find time to write more? How, how do I, you know, I got all the things, all the things that I have going on, right? You know, I need to make dinner tonight and I've got to make sure that all the things are done and the wash is done and we've got, you know, a tournament coming and, you know, next week after that, my husband has to travel. And, you know, it's like all these things that are coming up and they're in my mind and I'm gnawing on them, right? It says to meditate on the word of God. And really what I was meditating on and thinking about is, is my worries and my concerns and how am I going to have the energy because I was feeling that afternoon slump. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just worried about my energy and how am I going to do all these things, right? And I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, I don't even feel the peace of God. And I know that's me because I've gotten at this point in my spiritual walk. I know that that's on my end. I know that the peace of God is just sitting there inside of me. You know, and the Holy Spirit's going, okay. All right, Leah's, Leah's ramping up. I'm just going to wait. <laughs> have you ever done that to your your child who's having like a total nuclear meltdown and you're like and I'm just going to wait until you pull yourself together and engage with me right and I've had to do that with my daughter she's she's had a lot of feels over the years and you know she is a very high sensing person and you know that's what God is just waiting for us he's just you know, he's ever the gentleman. You know, a lot of us, you know, well, why can't God just fix things? Well, he's waiting on us to connect with him. He's waiting on us to connect with his word. He's waiting on us to act in accordance with his word. You know, I had somebody the other day who, you know, was looking for a financial miracle. And I was like, well, God blesses the works of our hands. What do you, you, you can't just sit there and expect money to fall out of the sky into your lap. That's not the way it works, okay? It doesn't, you know, it says the diligent will be prosperous, right? It says keep your, you know, look at the ant and see what it does. And, you know, Proverbs talks a lot about planning, saving, and doing, right? And so God is waiting for us to come into first alignment with his spirit, and to, you know, calm ourselves and to fix our eyes on him through the word. Okay, because that's a lot of times we're like, I just need to cut it. I just need to feel God. And we're so frantic that first we have to come to the scripture. That's why I have scripture all over my house. It, I, you can't walk in my house and not bump into scripture. <laughs> I need that. This is the way that we transform our lives. This is the way we transform our thought process, our mindset, so that we can live the prosperous, abundant life, right? We're constantly bumping into scripture and we're constantly reminding ourselves of what God is saying, what is in alignment with him, bringing our spirit and our thoughts and our emotions back into alignment with him, then we will be in a peace that surpasses all worldly circumstances. That was the thing I didn't know for decades. You know, why can't, you know, things just work out? God, I don't understand, you know. Like, I was constantly probably just blaming God for not just magically fixing things, right? You know, and he's just waiting for me, ever the gentleman. He's not going to push his agenda on us. Some of you are probably waiting for God to smack you upside the head. He's going to allow your circumstances and your choices to smack you upside your head. Just like he did mine today. You know, he's like, go ahead. 
Ha have your nuclear emotional meltdown right now. And then when you're ready, I'm right here. I'm right here waiting. And this is hashtag real and raw. And you guys are probably like, oh my gosh. <laughs> You know, but I have to be raw with you guys. I have to be real with you guys. I have to give you a little bit of hard truth or you won't reap the benefits. You won't find the abundant, joyful life. You won't cultivate faithfulness. It says we must cultivate it. That is active work, you guys. We have to do some work, right? You know, I know a lot of people are like, don't work in your own strength, work in God. Well, if you don't know the Word of God, you're not going to be working in the Word of God. So first, you have to get your own strength and open your Bible and start writing down stuff that speaks to you. Then you say, God, I'm going to work according to what you say here. Right? Can you get an amen? Thank you, Lori, for joining me. My bestie. She's my online bestie. She gives me such good encouragement. You know, and I need that every day. I sit down with my Bible. Uh, today I was running and I just let, you know, Luke, I think, I think I was in Luke. I don't know. I just hit the button. And I just let Jesus just talk. And it, when you just let it just, let it just wash over you. Sometimes you do not have to sit and just focus so intently on it. If you're doing dishes, just let the Word of God wash over you. It filters into your soul. We have to dig deep into the Word and cultivate it into our spirit, cultivate it into our mind, cultivate it so that it comes out of our mouth in such a way where we go, wait a second, did I just say that? <laughs> Is everything out of my mouth is changing over the last six years. Day by day, moment by moment, little by little, until now I'm very different in the words that I say. Very different. I mean, trust me, there are days where I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, Jesus, that was totally my humanness that just said that nonsense. <laughs> you know? And this is the truth of it, you guys. I want you guys to walk in healing and health and transformation. I want that desperately for you guys. Like, you don't understand. Like, when I started, when I finally got it and I got my, my, my pivotal healing and transformation, I was like, I want this so badly for everyone. Like, I, you know, being marked as Christ's own doesn't mean that we're walking in the fruits of the Spirit. It doesn't mean that we're walking according to His Word. And if we're not walking according to His Word, then how are we expecting that we're going to have blessings rain down to us? Right? How are we going to expect that He's going to open the storehouses? Like it says, He says, I will open up a storehouse and rain down on you such a blessing that you your vats will overflow with new wine it will be running over in your lap running over but if we're not spending time coming right back into alignment with him with his spirit with his word and you guys yes yes it takes some work and extra effort but my god the rewards of it the rewards of it are so mighty and wonderful and powerful and fruitful, right? And it just gets easier. I find that when I come out of alignment and I'm just a, like starting to cultivate some stuff that's like the past junk, it's so much easier now to be like, whoa, check. Let's fix that. Let's fix that. And I just, I come right back. I come right back. And it just gets easier and easier. You know, it, you are never going to be immune from trials and tribulations. You're never going to be immune from feeling, you know, all the feels, right? But it becomes easier and easier to manage those feels, manage the hard times, manage the hard circumstances, to, to walk in them in such a different way that they become fruitful, for ourselves that we can use i mean we're already going to walk through hard times well, why waste them right 
you're already going to have trials and tribulations. You're already going to have frustrating days. You're already going to have people talk smack about you, say things that aren't true, hurt your feelings, because we live in a bro broken, sinful world. So why not make it so that it's easier to walk through them? So we respond in a Christ-like way so that those time periods are diminished in intensity, right? When people hurt me now, like the intensity of the pain is so different and, the, and it l doesn't last near as long. It doesn't last near as long. Like that's what we need, right? You know, because we're bubbling over with Christ-like love. And so the more we're bubbling over with that, more we're in alignment with that, the more we're connected to that, then his healing power is there right? Heals those wounds faster. And as we just speak the word of God over ourselves and the word of God just springs up, right? It says springs of living water will run through you. It says, I will make your mouth a gushing torrent, a fountain of wisdom. A fountain of wisdom. And if we're giving wisdom to ourselves, and others around us, how many benefits are we going to have? And it says the wisdom comes from the word. It says get wisdom. One of Proverbs. One proverb is like get wisdom. <laughs> Wisdom's from the word of God, right? And wisdom is God. It says, it says on my vision board, one of the verses I printed out is um Wisdom and counsel come from you, Lord. That's, don't, that's not verbatim. But, you know, and I just think like, yes, we can do this. We can do this. You can do this. You are worthy. You are wonderful. You are made to embrace and indwell the Spirit of God. Right? So no matter what, no matter how overwhelming it feels, like rebuke that. That's just the enemy seeking to keep you from cultivating a harvest of righteousness. Right? Can I get an amen? That's right. It says the devourer, I will rebuke the devourer from your harvest. Right? The works of your hands, I will bless the works of your hands. Right? So... Uh, I just think that that's, we just totally needed to talk about that. We just, yes, yes, all, all Jesus. And, you know, he lets me go through some hard times so I can just come and share with you. <laughs> Here, here's my hard time. <laughs> but it's good stuff, right? You know, because then we just, we bounce back so much stronger, so much mightier, right? You know, it, just like King David. He started out by carrying little lambs next to his father, you know, walking next to the sheep, watching his father, uh, you know, shear the sheep and, and, and growing day by day, moment by moment, learning to the next time he was, you know, it says that he could rip apart bears and wild lions with his hands, right? That didn't just happen overnight. We have to take these little things and let them catapult us stronger and stronger, cultivating those faith muscles. I don't really have big muscles. You guys are like, oh my gosh, Leah, never show your muscles again. <laughs> All right, let's read today's verse, which is just Ephesians is awesome. It's just, it's like all, all the yum. It's, well, all of, all of scripture is super awesome, but. But I, I love this. I love this because I also love that song, um, Open the Eyes of My Heart, right? Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I know. I can't sing worth nothing. I know. But it's one of the things that I'm going to ask when I go to heaven is that Jesus gives me a really good singing voice because I love to sing. <laughs> and you guys are like, please never, never, never sing. But that's okay because I do it a lot. So, you know, it just might be on the next episode of Bible study. <laughs> All right. We're in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, 
What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Right? We need that knowledge of God. We need that knowledge of God so that our eyes are opened, so that our hearts are transformed, so that our mind is, is, is flooded with light, love, power of God. Right? You know, Jesus rebuked the enemy using scripture. And that's where we have to stand. We have to stand on that. We have to stand on the word of God. We need to speak it out loud. In, in all of my Bible studies, all of my prayer challenges, I always encourage you guys to speak the word of God out loud and to imprint the word on your heart and mind so that you have that power to rebuke the enemy, rebuke those bad feelings, and, and to walk through your trials and tribulations in such a way that you catapult yourself into the promised land, into the inheritance. It says inheritance, promised land, unique blessings made just for you, made just for me. We don't have to be jealous of anyone. We don't have to worry about what, you know, Susie Sue down the street has or, you know, Layla has or, you know, I don't know. Joe down the road has. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about anything like that. Right? Because our blessings are ours when we start walking in the kingdom of God. When we start walking in his power. When we start walking in his spirit. Then those things that God puts on our heart. It says, I delight myself in you, Lord. And you give me the desires of my heart. But we first have to delight ourselves. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you, right? But that's where we have to go. We can't keep saying, I want a miracle, but we're not willing to walk in the kingdom of God first, right? And that starts in the word of God. That starts by allowing God to open the eyes of our heart, right? And to really, really cultivate an, a, a, a deep knowledge of him. All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your holy word. Thank you so much that you um, you made a way for us to boldly come to the most high God, majestic and holy. In our own power, we have no right to come to that throne room. But through you, we're washed clean, we're set apart, we're sealed and marked. We are a royal diadem. And have a father's hand. And that is beautiful. And that is awesome. And that is mighty. And it just humbles me, Lord. It humbles me that you love us that much. And that you walk this broken world with us. Lord, I pray that you would give us just a deep craving to find time to sit in your word. And to just imprint it upon our hearts and minds. So that we can call upon your word during times of trials and tribulations. To rebuke the enemy just like you did with the, your holy word. We want to walk into our, our promised land, into our inheritance, into our blessings. We want to be with you united and we want to feel your presence. And so, Lord, we just pray that you would help us to find those tools that we need to transform ourselves and to create the abundant, joy-filled, peace-filled life that surpasses all worldly circumstances. We worship and praise you this day and forever, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, you guys know. Mm. Uh, talking to Jesus always gets my emotions going. <laughs> How can it not, right? I was singing today um, that song. 
how vast beyond all measure. I forget the words, but oh, such a good one. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys for joining me on this Wednesday. And I wish abundant blessings on each and every one of you that is joining me today or joining me on hashtag replay. I am always so grateful to be able to be your spokeswoman and to serve you today. Tomorrow, um, there is no live, just devotional time. And then Friday, I am not going to go live like I normally do. So, no live. Um until Monday. So, but of course, there is over a hundred Bible studies that I have done. I looked at my YouTube page. So, if you guys ever want to be able to search through kind of more easily, I will post a link to my YouTube page because I upload every video not only to my my web page, my blog page, but that's hard to search through. But I also upload it to YouTube. So you guys can go there and it's much more easy to kind of scroll through and to see if there's, um, you know, a Bible study that you really need to listen to. That's there. I'll also post a link um, Caitlin and I created a devotional ebook for you guys, something that you can easily have whenever you want. So that's also available to you. Um, so lots of really good stuff. There's also the Marriage Prayer Challenge starts February 3rd, and y'all, it's a good one. Even my VA, Caitlin, who's not a Christian, and I love her, and I want her to be one, and she knows this. It's okay. She knows this. <laughs> and she says, wowza, this is a good one. And so um, it's not your typical Bible verses. Um, it actually, there's not one Bible verse in there actually about marriage. <laughs> you guys are probably like, huh? <laughs> but you guys know how much I feel very strongly that we have to work on us before we can pour out to others. Now, don't get me wrong, there is prayer in there about our spouses, and it's good stuff. But these are not your typical verses that you think that they are. And on top of that, if you do not think that this workbook is the bomb.com so awesome, I will give you your money back. It's 10 bucks. It's like less than a, a Starbucks and a Danish. <laughs> Uh, I was really excited when I got it done on Sunday. I just felt like, wow, Jesus, like I am so, I am so not worthy that you would choose me to work through. And, but I, y'all know my feels about that. Like you don't tell Jesus no. Like that's where I am in my life now. I don't tell him no anymore. <laughs> I used to. And that was never good. <laughs> but I never say no. If he says do something, I now say yes. Right here. Scared but will. <laughs> and uh, so you guys, this um, this Bible uh, the ch prayer challenge uh, workbook is going to be awesome. And I, I'm just super excited. I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it and to um, work in it and let me know what you think. Uh, I'm just, I, I'm, I, I'm over the moon. Like God just is awesome. And I just like humbled every day that he's picked me. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, he's like, who's completely unqualified? You! <laughs> But he qualifies the called. And I'm telling you guys, now it's getting easier and easier to write, you know, because he keeps training. It says in the Bible, he trains your mouth and hands what to speak and say, right? You know, God says, I will be with you and I will tell your mouth what to say. And then to Solomon, he trained his hand to write in such a way that people were amazed at his writing. And so I used to say that over a year ago. I used to proclaim, God trains my hand what to write and my mouth what to speak. And I still say it. It's one of my, still one of my proclamations. 
And, you know, he has been faithful to train me up and, and to make it so that I, I look at the work that I do now and I'm like, God, you are awesome. <laughs> you know, it's all, it's all Jesus. It's, it's, it's all glory, all glory to him. It has um, zero to do with me. It's all him because I want to serve you guys. That I, I, I just feel so strongly about serving and serving well in such a way that it will bring you closer to, to Christ and so that you can walk through trials and tribulations of life. That's what I want. I want us to be able to walk through the things that are coming no matter what. They're coming no matter what. We might as well be able to, to sustain them in such a way that we don't become like little mini monsters. And I just used to be like such a jerkwad during hard times. <laughs> That's just the real truth of it. And now I'm a little better. <laughs> Still working. Still working on it, obviously, as evidenced by today. Anyway, I love you guys. You guys are awesome, beautiful, wonderful, and just so encouraging and uplifting to me. Every time you guys post, every time you like, every time you watch, I just, I'm honored. I'm honored and, um, you know, just glory to God for all that he's doing in our lives. He's truly trying to raise up women um, in 2020, like nobody's business. He is doing a new thing in women's lives and just massive amounts of work. Like, you know, like in Lori's life, I mean, he's working in her and her daughter's life and they're creating an amazing company. And I'm just, I'm just floored by what God's doing. He is trying to give each and every one of us a platform in the area that he wants for us. Y'all, he wants to do a new thing in your life. Will you be aware of it? May God bless you with God-blessed eyes to see the things he's trying to do in your life. Amen. Amen and amen to that. Amen. That is one of my favorite verses. You guys, please feel free to reach out for um, prayer any, any time. Um, and we will, I will definitely have prayer posts over the next couple of days. I'm going to a meeting on Friday, but I'm still going to have a prayer post. It just might not be you post and I'm like posting right after you. I will still pray for you. I will still post a prayer. Um, but um, I'm looking forward to this meeting on Friday. And so I, I love you guys. You guys are awesome, beautiful, wonderful people who honor me by just listening, sharing time with me, sharing time with the Lord, and we're just all working towards transformation and change, right? All right, my friend. Thank you guys. Love you guys. I will see you later.